Kids 106, Jack FM. It's Sophie on the Sunday Roast. And Lee McQueen is probably one of the most popular Apprentice winners ever. He got the job with Sir Alan, as he then was, two years ago. And now is launching his own business here in Oxfordshire. I caught up with him to find out what he thinks of this year's show and about his own new venture. You obviously watched the best series anyway. Uh, so I went <laughs> <my better lessons. laughs> the new episode had everything in it. The big egos, the backstabbing has already started in the boardroom. I think uh, Lord Sugar summed it up perfectly. He thought there was a load of bunch of old women, didn't he? <laughs> well, I love how he seems to have these little phrases prepared, like the one about moaning minis, and he just sort of drops them in. He you know? does. I haven't gone through the process myself uh, all the way through to, to the end, and, and obviously working for Lord Sugar for mm. the last two years. That is how he is. That, you yeah. know, he, he often does that. You, you'd walk into a meeting with him, and he'd drop in a funny or one line, and you'd think, <laughs> hang on, where'd that come from? <laughs> the new series he has publicly said is, is quite different. He feels you've got some people there who are doctors and have businesses on the side, you know, some other people who've had epic fails and, you know, some of them who are unemployed, which ties nicely into the new business you're launching, which we'll talk about in a minute. But do you think it is different or do you look at the, the new crop and think, oh, they are kind of, it is the same kind of people? I do think they're different. I mean, one thing that struck me when looking at their bios is mm. that there is about five or six candidates there that have actually set their own business up. And I've, as you said, have it on the side at the moment or have actually failed in business. And I would question whether or not they're going in to the apprentice for the right reasons. Mm. One of the reasons why I went into The Apprentice was to improve my skill set in terms of setting up a company and a business mm. and, and learning from arguably the best entrepreneur the UK's ever seen. Yeah. D- is there anyone that stands out for you as, as you think potential winner? And please don't say the one that was like a little Jack Russell who nearly got the boot in the first week. <laughs> Mr. Aggression, Actually, I call yeah, him. The, yeah, the, the, Stuart, I think you're talking yeah. about that. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I, believe you me, there's absolutely no way on this planet that guy's going to win it. No. So uh, I wouldn't worry about that. I think it's the people that you kind of don't notice so much. But I thought Chris and Jamie on The Boys were quite well. They worked hard. They seemed to get their head down. They had some good ideas. And they also had an opinion. But they didn't do it in a backstabbing type way. Like, yeah. like Stuart would or even Alex and, you know, in, in a bitchy type way. <laughs> but um, don't forget, everything Stuart touches turns to sold, Lee. Honestly, what, what a classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have loved uh, it if they, he had been booted out and he hadn't packed, which obviously he probably had. And he then had to go, uh, can I just have the taxi back to the house? all my pants are still upstairs. Do you, do you know what, though? Inside, <laughs> inside information here, when somebody gets fired, yeah. they do not go back to the house. We do not get to see them. So, really? Um, yeah, so they, that would not have been allowed. That oh. would have been a bit of an issue. So let's talk about what you're doing now because it, it's you must have almost sort of kissed the sky at the fact that up comes, you know, the new series of The Apprentice and there are some unemployed people in there. Although, quite how you can be an unemployed business manager, you're surely either one or the other. <laughs> yeah, sort it out, I, I, you know? I've got to say, I did chuckle to myself a little bit as well when Alex comes out with and says I'm unique you don't often get people that are like me yet his last company let him go yeah. <laughs> like, wow. you're launching this Raw Talent Academy yeah my company is kind of a, a double whammy if you like it's, I'm looking to get small medium enterprises mm. and corporate organisations to take on a sales academy mm. whereby they will actually grow their own sales staff they will become loyal. They, will, they have the desire to work for that company. They will be mentored and developed and, and, and put through learning specifically to that company's traits and how, how they actually want these people to sell mm. in, uh, in the future. Uh, so that's the first element of it. And the second element of it is obviously creating jobs mm. and creating opportunities for people, as you said, either graduates that, that haven't got an opportunity or people that are currently just uh, signing on or people that don't feel like they've got the right qualifications, like mm. myself. I, I've, I've never been to university my, myself mm. and really haven't been given an opportunity. They might be currently working as a bartender mm. or working in a supermarket or working in a market store or, you know, whatever, that just feel, I don't know, corporate sales I'd never be able to go and do that I'd like to I have. Yeah. I think I have the raw talent the raw attributes to be able to do that which for me would be you know that streetwise that ability to sniff a deal mm. that intellect that desire that hunger that determination which a lot of the traits that we see in, in apprentice candidates actually mm. so Raw Talent Academy is about scouting the country for raw talent based not on academic qualifications or CVs I mean you know, if you watch my series you'll, mm. you'll remember that I famously got rumble for fibbing on my CV yes. and that's another reason for me launching my business because mm. I want everybody on the, on the same playing field Sophie yeah. it's not about you're a graduate and you're not so therefore I'm going to take the graduate on it's mm. about well, you're a graduate and you're not but actually what skills can you actually show me yeah. it's not about what you can write on, the, on a piece of paper 
And I've been an employer of salespeople for the last seven years. Mm. And for the last two years, working for Lord Sugar, I built a sales team in advertising. And it's notoriously difficult, Sophie, to find good salespeople that, that you, you buy off the shelf. Hey, trust me, have you, uh, you been know. upstairs and looked at our sales team? I know exactly what you mean. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that was your comment, not mine. So are you hoping, because you're a local boy, you live in Aston Road, right? I do, yes. And exactly. are you hoping Oxfordshire is going to throw up some gems? Absolutely. There's a lot of local businesses, you know, medium-sized businesses in Oxfordshire that I'm hoping will look at this and go, that's a, that's a good idea. Mm. I'd quite like to start to see if I can grow our own sales staff. Yeah. And I'm absolutely convinced that Oxfordshire has a huge amount of talent pool, if you like, that will be sitting there saying, you know what, I graduated last year. I'm just about to graduate. Now, I haven't really got any offers on the table of what I want to do. I'm going to go and do some bar work. Similarly, I'm absolutely convinced in Oxfordshire that uh, there's people sitting there in a job, uh, you know, working in a job that they kind of don't want to be in because they want something slightly different from themselves, qualifications or not, or even being unemployed, as you said before, yeah. that says, you know what, I just need a, I just need an opportunity. And I'd urge them to get in touch via the website, wartalentacademy.com, apply to them, me and my team will evaluate them and, and, and see if we can put them through. I know you're going to be mentoring. Are you going to be teaching them their own little trademark? Because obviously you had that, what would you even call it? The the eagle noise or the... Oh, the, the reverse pterodactyl. The reverse pterodactyl. Well, that's the badger. Yeah, you know, eagle noise. <laughs> I, I think everyone's an individual. I think you, you just said, I think you've hit a nail on the head there. You know, <laughs> everyone has to make their own individual mark and it would be up to them to, to develop their own, uh, as they Reverse make animal. their own mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no reason why you can't have fun and make money at the same time. And, and that's what my organisation's all about. It's 106 Jack FM. It's the Sunday Roast with Sophie.